Hello again and welcome back to English Literature A Click Away. This video covers two gems by Robert Frost, two short poems, Dust of Snow and Fire and Ice. Robert Frost, an American modernist poet, we can see a touch of romanticism here, his love for nature. So let's look at the first one that is Dust of Snow. It's a short poem, it seems like just one sentence that has been divided into different lines of one stanza. So let's give it a read. The way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree, has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rued. Now we see some elements of nature that have been used by Robert Frost in this poem, like the crow, snow and the hemlock tree. So the basic theme of this poem is that nature never fails us, nature has a power to heal us. Even the elements which we consider to be carrying negativity or bad omen like the crow or the hemlock tree. Hemlock tree is a tree that bears white flowers and is a poisonous tree. So he says that even the elements which we look down upon sometimes help us heal or uplift our mood. And snow reflects happiness, that is snowfall is connected to happiness. So here he says that he thinks that at a moment when I was under a hemlock tree, maybe he was passing by or he was seated there. He says when I was under a hemlock tree and a crow had perched upon one of its branches, it shook the branch and the dust of snow that was settled or deposited on the branch, it fell upon me. So I was covered in the dust of snow. But that gave my heart a change of mood. That means it changed my mood. The falling of that snow, which happened because of shaking of the branch due to the movement of crow who was seated on the hemlock tree. So that changed my mood. And till then I had rue. Rue is to hold something in regret. Okay, so he had regretted maybe some decision he had made or he regretted the day as it had passed. He says till then I was holding regret and as soon as the snow fell upon me it uplifted my mood it changed my mood and i was no longer being regretful so it had saved some part of the day which i had ruled so that is the literal meaning of it and the, as the theme goes that these elements of nature the crow the snow and the hemlock tree they come together to uplift the mood that means the elements of nature or the nature itself never fails us and there's nothing as negativity in the nature. Nature always helps us. Nature always nurtures us. It is always for us and in favor of us. Coming to the poetic devices that are used in the poem, although a short one, but there are many poetic devices used here in the poem. So we'll go as per the sequence. First one is inversion. Inversion is the poet takes the liberty to change the structure of a sentence. So here we see, the way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from hemlock tree. So we can feel that it was not a regular kind of a sentence. So the structure is changed instead of saying the way a crow that was sitting on a hemlock tree shook down some dust of snow on me. So instead of that, he says that way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from hemlock tree. So you see, when we speak those lines, there is a rhythm to it. There are the words are rhyming and there is there's a music to the way we speak those words. So that is why the inversion is used here. Next one is enjambment. Enjambment is continuation of the sentence in the next line of a poem without any punctuation marks, without any break. So we see the first line is continued to the second. The third one is continued to the fourth, fifth to sixth and seventh to eight. So it is one complete sentence broken down into eight lines of a poem. Next is synecdoche. Synecdoche is a poetic device which represents a part for a whole. So that means a part of a body or person or a thing is used to represent the entire thing. So instead of saying the body, we say an eye. For example, when we say give me the head count, it means the number of persons present. So here we see, as I've shown it in the corresponding color, synecdoche is in the fifth and sixth line where he says has given my heart a change of mood he says my mood has changed the mood of the person itself has changed so has given my heart heart here represents the person itself so it is synecdoche 
coming to alliteration so alliteration is repetition of consonant sounds in consecutive words in sentence or in a line of a poem so and saved some parts so saved and some have the s sound repeated here so that is alliteration moving over to the next poem fire and ice another short poem by robert frost or oh, let's give it a read some say the world will end in fire some say in ice from what i've tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice although upon first read the poem seems to be like a depressing poem that is not what it is this is a poem of warning so the poet here is actually trying to warn us that certain vices that the human beings hold may lead to the end of the world the words fire and ice are symbolic to certain vices for example the fire represents desire lust and greed and violence and the word ice here is symbolic of hatred indifference or coldness towards fellow human beings some say that the world will end in fire so he said out of all the people in the world some say that the world is going to end because of fire it will end in fire and some others say that it will end in ice now he says that from what i have tasted of desire now desire here is not any simple desire it is greed it is lust he says that i hold with those i support those i second those who favor fire favor fire here does not mean that people want the world to be destroyed it just means that they think that the world will end because of fire so he says i second those i support those who say that the world is going to end in fire because i have tasted i have seen so much of greed and lust and desire in this world and that is why i think that the world is going to end if it ends it will end because of fire and then he contemplates and he says that but if it had to perish twice it is the world here perish is coming to an end to be destroyed he says if the world was to come to an end twice if it had two lives then he says i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice suffice means being sufficient if the world had the capability the ability to be perished twice it, if it had two lives then it, it could be destroyed by ice as well but there's enough of hatred indifference not being empathetic towards fellow human beings he says i have seen enough of that and i can say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice so ice would also be sufficient again he is not supporting the destruction of the world the hatred that we all nurture in our hearts as human beings the, the vices that represent ice are also enough to destroy the world so remember the symbolism in fire and ice the entire poem itself is based on symbolism here and that becomes the main theme of the poem coming to the poetic devices again a short poem with a lot of poetic devices here and that is what makes it beautiful so uh, as per the sequence we see anaphora here so the words with the same color as anaphora some say now anaphora is repetition of words or phrases in the beginning of consecutive lines in a poem so some say the world will end in fire some say in ice so the words some say are repeated in consecutive lines one after the other in the beginning of the lines of the poem so that's anaphora there's alliteration alliteration is repetition of consonant sounds so the sound made by w here world will and the sound made by f here in favor fire so this is alliteration next one is enjambment so we see the first line is continued to the second the third one is continued to the fourth and the sixth seventh eighth and ninth lines are a one single sentence actually so that's enjambment coming to assonance assonance is repetition of vowel sounds in the same line in the words that are closely located so here we see i hold with those who favor fire so although there's o in who and favor as well but we are looking at the vowel sounds here so hold and those are repetition of vowel sounds so it is assonance 
symbolism as we have discussed the entire poem is full of symbolism the fire represents greed lust and violence and ice represents hatred indifference and coldness this imagery imagery is as the word says imagery uh, the words are woven in such a way that they create an image in front of you so the words like some say the world will end in fire some say in ice when these words are spoken we can imagine we can pictureize the world ending in fire or in ice the world being frozen or the world being on fire so that is imagery with that we come to an end with the discussion of the poems dust of snow and fire and ice with the poetic devices now the questions you may expect from these poems can be based on the theme the theme of dust of snow or fire and ice and they can also be questions based on poetic devices in multiple choice questions or that comes under the extracts part of the question paper so make sure not to miss any video uploaded by the channel please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to english literature a click away